Thank you so much. And thank you so much to the organizers who've done a terrific job on this conference, by the way. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, a little adv advanced organizer. Um, I'm going to talk about misinformation and what makes it spread and acknowledge that a lack of knowledge, as we've talked about, and motivating re motivated reasoning contribute to the spread of misinformation. But there's more. Often it's not just the lack of facts, but the wrong gist of the facts. And by gist, I mean probably what you think I mean. When we talk about the gist of a message, it's essential bottom line or basic meaning. I'm going to give you some worked examples from research that we've done about how GIST explains misusing antibiotics by both patients and clinicians, despite the knowledge that they probably aren't going to work for the particular infections people have. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, misconceptions about genetics and breast cancer risk and between vaccines and disease, as several of the speakers have. But the, the uh, bottom line of the, of the message about the bottom line is that GIST is more likely to be messages that incorporate GIST are more likely to be effective, remembered uh, over uh, longer periods of time, and shared through social media. GIST is most effective when it explains why information is correct, especially when there's a vacuum of information. For example, in autism, one of the things that makes all of these stories compelling uh, is that there isn't an explanation for autism. We don't know why it occurs. There are many other diseases like that. So as you know, nature abhors a vacuum. And if you can tell a compelling story that fills that void, that's more likely to be shared. But scientists can do that too. Uh, GIST helps connect a message to values. So when we talk about GIST, we're talking about a mental representation of information that's in a very basic form. And because it's in a basic form, it cues our core values. So you're more likely to be able to connect with your core values if you represent information in terms of GIST. And then finally, um, there are certainly are effects of stories just per se and emotion, but this, these effects are beyond the effects of stories and emotion, and they talk about the mechanism by which stories are effective. All right, so the standard in my field is usually dual process theory. So emotion versus reason, a kind of Cartesian dualism, this is very familiar, and we often think it's one versus the other. Um, and in fact, we talk about intuition and emotion together as a kind of primitive system. This is how children think. They think intuitively. This is what Piaget said. Whereas adults, at least mature adults, scientists, in fact, think, think in terms of computation and analysis. And, you know, for example, how many animals of each kind did Moses put on the ark? Zero. There you go. So if you think, because <laughs> it was Noah. So the idea is that it's thinking quickly, it's thinking fast. This is low-level thinking. If we just deliberated more, we'd be advanced. So when the public or policymakers don't embrace science, we assume it's because of this low-level thinking. They don't know the facts, or they know the facts, but they're not thinking hard enough, or they know the facts, but they're motivated to believe something else. These are the, you know, very, um, uh, and these are all legitimate explanations. But we want to go beyond that. Fuzzy trace theory, and the fuzzy traces are this, these gist representations of information. Fuzzy trace theory says there's something else beyond just reason versus emotion. It's the global subjective meaning of messages. So people are operating not on the basis, including scientists, by the way, we don't operate on the basis of objective, rote, memorized facts. We, we operate on the basis of our perception of those, or how we meaningfully interpret that. Uh, it incorporates the context, and it's actually generally smart because kids are more literal, and as you get older, adults become more gist-based. In fact, this contributes to an increase in things like false memories. So you actually get less accurate with respect to objective memories for the facts as you get older. You go beyond the data and read into the data more as you get older. Normally, that's a cognitive strength. But obviously, if your background knowledge is impoverished, the gist that you take away from me uh, messages is also impoverished. But it gives us an avenue to help people to reach them by focusing on the gist, which is the mainstay of cognition, as opposed to the verbatim reasoning. Now, so the standard kind of intervention is you manipulate emotion and motivation to make a message be effective. You, th you teach facts, or you think longer about it. But fuzzy trace theory says, no, you f focus on what is the essential bottom line, the simple bottom line. And if you have knowledge, you extract a certain kind of representation from information based on your background knowledge. You interpret it differently than the person next to you. 
who has different background knowledge. You extract the gist, and then it's that gist that often governs our emotions and our motivations. We see something as a threat or an opportunity. We feel relieved or we feel fearful because of the way we interpret the information, and that, in fact, causes our emotions. And as I'll show it to you briefly, that also um, accounts for whether people share messages. It accounts for unique variants, as they like to say in our, my business. All right, so in one of our interventions, we used artificial intelligence and fuzzy trace theory to try to get across to, to folks how breast cancer and genetic risk are linked. Often people have the misconception that all breast cancer is genetic. And in fact, the probability of it being genetic is very low in general, whereas if you have a genetic mutation, your probability of breast cancer is high. That's a very confusing kind of fact. We managed to unconfuse people and give them the gist, and we've done randomized uh, trials with that in the, on campus, but also in the community. And now we're extending some of these tools to diverse audiences, because as has been so eloquently expressed at this meeting already, we have to think about the diversity of our audiences and reach a broader range of people who come to this with different funds of knowledge, different cultural contexts. And as we said, context is important to meaning. Um, this is just a slide from that intervention in which we talk, we are able to get across the base rate of breast cancer. That's about 25 out of 200 of these. And um, that the folks with mutation, uh, that that is a different denominator. It's a way to flip the denominators in people's minds so that they get the idea that breast cancer given mutation is a different probability than mutation given breast cancer. So what about Antibiotics, to give another worked example from our research. Um, if you think about, this is a gist that we've in fact studied in some of the classic gambles of economics. So if you think about the average patient, and we were studying patients in an emergency department when we did this study. That person comes to an emergency department because they're very sick. So they can think to themselves, well, I'm already sick. These antibiotics are probably not going to help me, but there's two possibilities. I'll either still be sick, or I'll feel better. Even if there's just a possibility I might feel better, the bottom line just is I might as well go for it and ask for antibiotics. In fact, we found that, that the majority of physicians and patients endorse that gist. And the gist is, why not take a risk? I'm already sick. There's only two ways it could turn out. So that very, very simple idea accounted for, um, as I said, the majority of patients. Uh, we call it winter. Why not take a risk? So 76% of patients endorse, endorse that. And among those who even knew that germs were not germs, that viruses are not the same as bacteria, so they, they had the basic uh, scientific knowledge, uh, a majority of them still endorse this basic gist. It probably won't work. I know it won't work. I understand the scientific facts, but it's worth a shot. All right. So. Um, also, we've looked at the effect of the gist content of messages, and this is work by Brian Nachowski, Hilliard, and Dresdy, uh, looking at the effect of stories with and without a gist, and whether that causes information to be shared. And um, as I've said so far, when, when, uh, stories, when uh, messages incorporate a gist, they're more likely to, be, to convey a message that is likely to be shared. So in fact, in their work, they looked at um, uh, uh, shares on Facebook related to the measles outbreak. And they were able to use human coders to distinguish statistics from stories from gist, whether messages or articles that were shared had those three characteristics. And they could have all three, for example. And the question is, what uh, helped um, uh, encourage the sharing of information on Facebook? And in fact, um, as you can see here, controlling for the length of the article, its readability, whether it had a vivid emotional image did have an effect, that is an increased odds ratio, as did whether having a story, although that wasn't significant because there was a lot of variability. But statistics and gist also increased the probability of sharing a message. So our conclusion that where stories were indeed effective, they can make you, they can have you react emotionally, they can also convey a gist because they can explain a causal connection why there's a connection there. So stories were effective to the extent that they communicated jest. And so in summary, 
Uh, so fuzzy trace theory, I, you'll be uh, pleased to know, I have not uh, regaled you with our mathematical models and our boring <laughs> <laughs> experimental big analyses, but we have those. Um, and the message here is a hopeful one. Information really can um, combat misinformation and misconceptions, but you have to convey more than just the facts, just uh, appeal to emotion, or convey a story that has no gist, that doesn't explain reality, as opposed to merely report an anecdote. Um, are stories more effective uh, than simply presenting statistics and facts, even if people are numerate and have scientific knowledge? The answer is yes, if they explain the bottom line contextually relevant meaning. Thank you. <laughs>